My name is Zhang Zhao, and then people call me ZZ for short. So it's about slightly less than four years ago, I started my lab at the Carnegie Institution, Department of Embryology. And since then, my lab has been fascinated by the biology of transpondons, also known as jumping genes. To me, I feel these transpondons are literally just viruses inside our genome. And uh, to some extent, I feel uh, it is this class of jumping genes or these viruses made who we are. So we know transpondons are selfish elements in our genome. Their goal is to make new copies of themselves in the developing eggs so they can be inherited by the next generation. So our story explains how they uh, achieve this by taking a really unique strategy. So the story is published in a journal named Cell, which is a cutting-edge research journal with peer review process to promote research from biology as well as medicine. Before our study, people already know these transpondons are jumping genes can mobilize in the reproduction system in ovary or testes. And we also know uh, most likely it's their mobilization that cause disease and drive evolution. But what we don't know is how. How could they achieve this mobilization and whether they could utilize the egg production process for their own propagation purpose to massively propagate in, the, in our genome. So what we learned from this story is transpondons can use really unique strategy to achieve this goal. So what they did is they can utilize a specific group of cells called nerve cells. So for these nerve cells, their original function is produce nutrients and then transport these nutrients from themselves into the developing eggs to support the egg development. So what the transpondon does is they can repurpose these nerve cells at their own factory to massively produce their products. And these products most likely form this kind of virus-like particle. And then these particles do not mobilize back into nerve cell genome, into nerve cell DNA. What they did is they fool the transportation system and transport this material from nerve cells into the developing eggs and then only make mobilization, make a new copy of themselves in egg DNA. So we know the regular protein coding gene only take like 2 to 3% of our genome, but these transpondons, they take like 30% or even to up to 50% of our genome in human. People typically ignore them. They consider them as junk DNA, they're junk elements. I think they have really amazing biology. We just need to dig them out. That's how I really get excited about this whole transpondon business. Of course, there's no doubt that our story is built upon tons of discoveries from uh, the transpondon field, the parent community, as well as the germ cell community. So without the original work or original discovery from Barbara McClintock or Alan Spratling or Jerry Rubin in our department, it's almost impossible for us to get this unique question to get addressed. I think our work has laid down the blueprint to study the transpondon biology in the reproduction system. And with this information in hand, we can ask many more or deeper questions now such as how transpondon could hijack the transportation system from one cell to the other cell. So besides study transpondon biology in the reproductive system, uh, I also feel it would be equally exciting to study transpondon activity in the somatic cells because recently there are a few papers have indicated that the somatic transportation may be linked with cancer, aging, neurodegenerative disease. And I feel uh, study their biology in somatic cells may hold the promise for us to treat disease and improve human health.